Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now we start with a new lecture, lecture number 7, where we will discuss causes of fading of natural dyes. And as you would remember, in the previous lecture, I was mentioning about the photo oxidation of natural dyes. I even mentioned that some of the natural dyes do not have good light fastness and unless and until we try to understand the causes of fading, we will not be able to find a solution. And therefore, let us understand what are the causes of fading of natural dyes. Why are dyes colored? Let us understand that there is color perception by the retina and the range is from 400 to 700 nanometers which is in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. But how does this color get related to dyes? Color in dyes is invariably explained as a consequence of presence of chromophore and this we understood quite in detail in the last two lectures that it is the presence of chromophore along with oxochrome that creates the coloration in a molecule. Dyes are chemicals which have a structure and the structure must have lot of conjugation or alpha beta unsaturation and that alpha beta unsaturation or conjugation is what causes the absorption of wavelength in the visible region and that is why it is called chromophore. So, this we had talked about great in great details yesterday in the previous lecture. So, it must be very clear that these terminologies should be clear to the students before we proceed. Since by definition dyes are aromatic compounds, their structure includes aryl rings which have delocalized electron system they are responsible for the absorption of electromagnetic radiation of varying wavelength depending on the energy of the electron cloud. So, it is these conjugated molecules or aryl rings which actually absorb the wavelength of light and they excite the electron which are their pi electron in the electron cloud. Cause of color generation, chromophores do not make dyes colored in the sense that they confer to them the ability to absorb radiation. Rather, chromophore function by altering the energy in the delocalized electron cloud of the dye molecule and this alteration results in the compound absorbing radiation from within the visible region instead of other region. So, what is chromophore? We understood that they are conjugated systems in the molecule. Now, we are going one step ahead and I am trying to tell you that chromophores are the ones which are allowing the delocalized electrons in the molecule and they are responsible for the absorption of electromagnetic radiation which falls in the visible region instead of any other region. So, what makes a chromophore absorb light is because of the delocalization of the electron and that is what causes light to fall within the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Our eyes detect that absorption and corresponds to the complete range of wavelength seeing the color. It is only the visible part of the 
electromagnetic radiation which when absorbed by a molecule reflects a color and that is what is perceived by our retina. So, what is a chromophore? Chromophores are atomic configuration which can alter energy in delocalized system. They are composed of atoms joined in a sequence composed of altering single and double bonds. Double bond in organic compound can be of two types. If the adjacent atoms have double bonds, they are termed as conjugated double bonds and if the bonds interact with each other. However, if they are not, if there are two double bonds at two ends of butadiene and there is single bond in between, two single bond, then they will not be called as conjugated. So, it has to be double bond, single bond, double bond, then we say it is a conjugated system. Chromophore configuration often exists as multiple unit having conjugated double bonds and are more effective when they do so. So, it is possible that bonds can be from a far away for double bonds or they should be simply altered by a single bond. So, in the earlier case we will say it is isolated double bond as what I gave you an example of 1,4 butadiene. But if it is 1,3 butadiene, then it is a conjugated system. And so, if it is altered by a single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, we say that it is a conjugated system. So, this perception should be completely clear to you what does the word conjugated bonds mean and it is an essential part of a chromophore. The more the conjugation, the deeper will be the color in the Vibgeor color. Color and structure of the dye. So, now slowly we are proceeding towards understanding what generates color and how is it related to structure. Although we have seen that in the previous lecture that chromophore along with oxochrome are responsible for the color chemistry, but we will learn a little more again today. The structure and color are actually related and dependent. The explanation of the relationship between the structure and color depends on the basic atomic structure of the aryl ring or the aromatic ring and the shared or delocalized electrons that this atomic arrangement has, the ability to absorb radiation is inherent in this structure. So, the moment there are delocalized electrons and there is a conjugated system, it is bound to accept radiation. The effect of other atomic configuration is to modify the energy contained in the delocalized electron cloud so that the compound absorbs electromagnetic radiation at a wavelength in the visible region. So, the whole chemistry lies in the fact that there is a benzene ring, there is more delocalization of the electron due to oxochromes and it is this oxochrome which kinds of enhances the role of chromophore and chromophore put together that the light of a certain wavelength is absorbed. The absorption is from the electromagnetic radiation. Some also ionize enabling the compound to chemically react with ionizing tissue groups or materials. So, that is in an adverse condition when the excitation is too high then only it ionizes otherwise it only excites and absorbs the light from the electromagnetic radiation. Moving on, what is the effect of light on dyes? Because that is what is eventually either going to create uh, you know fading or stop fading. So, the effect of light, 
When light illuminates a dye, some of it is absorbed as energy. Since energy is not destroyed, something must then happen. We could use an analogy of heating water. The water's temperature rises, molecular vibration increases. However, we do not see anything else as the water just sits there being water. So, the same can happen with dyes. We may not observe anything particular as the effect, maybe at the atomic level. There are several possibilities, however. The energy level in the electron is an unaffected dye, is called the ground state. When electromagnetic radiation as light energy is absorbed, the electrons become energized. With most dyes, there is then a gradual decay and the electrons return to the ground state. We do not see anything happening with our naked eyes. Nevertheless, something may have happened and that we do not see. So, what I am trying to draw your attention by giving this water's example is that the energy is absorbed. Now, that energy will excite the electron, delocalize pi electron to the unoccupied molecular orbital and finally, it will come back after some time and this excitation we can only perceive through the emission. When the emission is there, then the light is visible to us. Photo fading and photo stability. Now, I have been talking about photo oxidation of natural dye in my previous lecture. So, we will go a little deeper into understanding that photo fading and photo stability of dyed and pigmented polymers is a commercial problem involving a complex interplay of phenomena and mechanism, many of which remain unresolved. Dye fading, for example, involves reactions not only associated with the dye itself, but also those involving the polymer as well as dye polymer interactions and these in turn are further complicated by the nature of environmental conditions. So, what I am trying to draw your attention is that first thing photo fading is not a simple phenomena. There is this dye there is pigmented polymer on which whether it is cellulose which is cotton fabric or silk which is polyamide and so on. It is a complex reaction of several molecules and therefore, the simply it is not only governed by the excitation or the absorption of light, there are also roles by the environmental conditions which cause photo fading. Factors that control photo excitation. In the case of dye structure, the nature of the constituent that is electron withdrawing or electron accepting group will influence its photophysical and photochemical behavior as will the position of substitution on the chromophore. Now, we go into a little deeper chemistry that if there is a with electron withdrawing group or an electron accepting group, then the photophysical and photochemical behavior will depend on the position at which the substitution is there. And I am sure you are aware that ortho para positioned substitution is different from meta positioned substitution. So, all those chemistry terms will come into play because the electronic configuration or the canonical structures of the benzenoid substituted structures will have a role to play. In the latter case, 
intramolecular hydrogen bonding is significant for anthraquinone chromophores. Now, if you recall, we had discussed that in anthraquinone there is C double bond O and if the neighboring carbon has hydroxyl, it can form an hydrogen bonding between the O of the carbonyl and the H of the hydroxyl. So, the interaction of the photo ex excited dye chromophore with the polymer matrix is an additional process which will not only control the stability of the dye, but that of the polymer as well. So, now this extra intramolecular hydrogen bonding can cause stability and can stop the photo excitation. So, let us now come to color fading. Color fading can occur from a variety of causes. One common reason for color fading is bleaching. Bleaching may happen naturally from sun exposure or it can happen from exposure to the chemical form of bleach. Other reasons for color fading can be from too hot of water during laundering and or not allowing recommended care guidelines for the specific type of fabric. Now, let me take a while to explain that when we use any powered oxidative solution like hydrogen peroxide or a bleach, it fades the color. Now, in many of the soap solutions that are marketed, there is some amount of oxidation in order to make the white fabric look whiter. Now, that can also have an adverse effect on the colored cloth because the colored cloth also will become fader. It will lose some of its color, although it is not a very powerful bleach, but still. So, we have to take care of the fact that the whatever care guidelines are given for a particular fabric, we should abide by it. Color fading happens when the pigment in the garment loses its molecular attraction with the fabric itself. Manufacturers use dyes or pigments to create a colored garment. The dyeing consists of a chemical process where the dye becomes part of the fabric. Pigmenting is a process where the pigment is applied as a layer over the fabric strands. In commercial fabric making, pigmenting is most common form of coloring fabrics. Color fading can occur with both types of coloring, but it is more likely to occur, occur with pigment printing. Now, there is a difference between dyeing and printing. Dye penetrates into the inner surface of the fabric, whereas pigment remains on the upper surface. So, obviously, when there is color fading on the pigment, it will fade faster than the dye that has penetrated into the fabric in the dyeing. So, the color fading is quite different in its uh, context because the color fading in dyeing takes longer and requires harsher condition, whereas the garment which has pigment printing done on it can fade faster because, because it is at the superficial level. So, now let us come to fading of natural dyes. So far, we were talking about general terminology. The fading of natural dyes can be attributed to various factors and it is essential to understand these causes to help preserve and extend the life of dyed materials. Some common reasons of fading of natural dyes include light exposure. We all know that natural dyes are often sensitive to light, particularly ultraviolet light. Prolonged exposure to sunlight 
can lead to photo degradation of the dye molecule causing them to break down and fade over time. It is therefore, advisable to store dyed fabric away from direct sunlight to minimize fading. In one of my previous lecture, I did mention that often it is recommended that the newly uh, printed garment should not be put directly under the sunlight, it should be dyed, it dried under shade and that is because it should be protected from ultraviolet light, so that the light does not have any fading effect on the naturally dyed fabric or garment. Factors that affect fading, washing and laundering also is one of the other major reasons of fading. Frequent washing and exposure to hot water can contribute to fading of natural dyes. Harsh detergents and strong agitation during washing can accelerate the loss of color. Using mild pH neutral detergents and adopting gentle washing practices such as hand washing or using the delicate cycle can help mitigate this issue. Now, here also I would like to mention that just the way when we wash silk or wool, we use easy or genteel, a special brand of non-ionic soap solution because they are pH neutral firstly and they have no harsh chemical which can cause fading and therefore, they are milder and that is how they should be used either by hand washing or by delicate cycle. You know there is a very slow cycle even in washing machine where these delicate fabrics which are naturally dyed should be put in if necessary. Otherwise, hand washing is the best. Even pH levels can cause fading. The pH of the environment can affect the stability of natural dyes. Some dyes may be sensitive to acidic or alkaline conditions leading to fading or color changes. So, we have to be extremely careful that we are not dipping the water which in, into a water which is either acidic or alkaline because it is going to affect the fading of the painted, printed or dyed naturally dyed fabric. It is important to be mindful of pH when washing or storing items dyed with natural dyes. So, some extra care needs to be taken if we want to stop fading or if we want to retard the fading. Fading cannot happen unless and until the, there is strong UV light or there is very hot water or there is very harsh uh, you know detergent, then these are the factors which cause immediate fading. Fading after say 20, 25 cycles of washing is a must and will always happen, you cannot stop it. And therefore, at least till that time the color should sustain on the fabric or the garment. Factors that affect fading, heat exposure is also one of the reasons which accelerate fading. Elevated temperatures can accelerate the fading process, so avoid exposing dyed materials to very high temperature during washing, drying or ironing. It is recommended to use cooler water for washing and to air dry items when possible. Even when we are doing dye demonstration and we are teaching natural dyeing process, we tell them to wash them in tap water and mostly we do not even kind of squeeze the fabric, we allow it to drip dye in air and keep it under shade. 
So, that way we are not exposing it to any extra UV light from the sunlight, we are avoiding any hot temperature, any hot water or harsh chemicals. Chemicals also interact. So, there is a chemical interaction which can also cause fading. Natural dyes may react negatively with certain chemicals found in the detergents, bleaches and other clean cleaning agents. Choosing mild chemical free product can help minimize the risk of unwanted reaction that could lead to fading. So, that is why I am telling you that we have to take extra care when we are dealing with natural dyes in order to avoid fading. Air pollution can also cause uh, fading. Now, airborne pollutants and contaminants can contribute to the deterioration of natural dyes. Storing dyed items in clean, well ventilated spaces can help reduce exposure to pollutants that might affect the color stability. So, we have to also keep in mind that we should not keep where there are too many acid fumes or any other kind of fumes which can cause fading to the dyed fabric which are naturally dyed because natural dyes are a little more sensitive than synthetic dyes. Factors that affect fur fading furthermore are insect infestation. Insects such as moth can damage dyed fabric. Protecting stored item from insects is crucial to maintaining the integrity of the natural dyes. So, because they are from biotic sources, there is a natural attraction of the moths to come to these naturally dyed fabric and they eventually damage. So, it is very important to protect all the stored garments from these insects and moths and that is how we can save the naturally dyed fabrics. Quality of water, the mineral content and impurities in water used for washing can also influence the fading of natural dyes. Hard water which contains high levels of minerals may have a negative impact using soft or filtered water can be beneficial. So, when we try to explain what kind of water quality is required for dyeing, we also mean even washing post dyeing the fabric which has been newly dyed has to wash and that washing water should not have any dissolved minerals because these minerals and impurities can have a negative impact. Therefore, soft water should be used and that is what we recommend. Not totally deionized water, but it should not have extra salts of magnesium and calcium which cause the hardness in the water. To enhance the life naturally dyed fabric, it is essential to take a holistic approach considering factors such as storage condition, washing practices and environmental exposure including UV light exposure. So, if we take care of these, then we are at least safe that we have taken measures for stopping the fading process. Of course, as I told you, fading will definitely occur. Natural dyes are not permanent dyes, but they can sustain up to 30, 35 wash cycles and that is good enough because we can at least wear the garment for that many times and with all its color restored. What is the fading mechanism? The fading of dyes whether natural or synthetic involves several mechanism. The specific mechanism can depend on the type of dye, 
the substrate it is applied to and the environmental conditions to which it is exposed. Here are some of the general mechanism responsible for fading of the dyes. Photo degradation, now this is one of the most crucial thing that happens to natural dye. Exposure to UV light, especially you know not just simple light, the UV light, it causes fading. Light energy can break the chemical bonds within a dye molecule leading to their degradation and loss of color. This process is known as photo degradation and we have discussed this because whenever we are trying to show light, UV light has very powerful rays and because of those energized rays falling on covalent bond, it breaks the covalent bond and destroys the structure of the molecule of the dye and that is what causes the chromophore to break or the oxochrome to break and then it is no more the dye that color that it was supposed to be retaining. And that is one reason, major reason photo degradation of the natural dye. Fading mechanisms could also involve chemical reactions. Dyes cannot undergo chemical reaction with various substances, but they can not, not with every substance, but definitely dyes can undergo chemical reaction with substances like oxygen, pollutants and other chemical present in the environment. Oxidation or reduction reaction may alter the molecular structure of the dye resulting in fading. Now, what does this mean? It means that the fading could get enhanced if there is oxygen, pollutants and some harsh chemical which can react with the dye. The process of oxidation or reduction can happen without our knowledge and that could result in fading. These are not colored reactions that you will observe any oxidation reaction happening in front of you in uh, by your eyes. You cannot see it, you cannot perceive it, but after some time you will see that the original color is gone which means that it has faded. Washing and abrasion, mechanical actions such as washing can cause the physical removal of the dye molecules from the substrate. Harsh detergents and abrasive washing practices can contribute to the fading of the dyes. Additionally, friction and abrasion during wear and use can lead to the gradual loss of color. So, you may have seen that earlier times when soap was applied, the women in the house would use harsh brush or would abrase it with their hand very uh, in a very agitated manner and that would remove the dirt. Well, they were practicing it to remove the dirt. However, if it is a natural dyed fabric and if it is treated with that kind of mechanical abrasion or harsh detergent, then definitely the fading has to happen and that nobody can stop. So, these should be avoided. pH changes, pH level of the environment can influence the stability of certain dyes. Dyes may undergo color changes or fading if exposed to conditions that are too acidic or too alkaline. And this we have discussed a while ago that pH can make a lot of difference to natural dyes. This is particularly relevant for natural dyes and that is why we say that natural dyes are pH sensitive. Heat also can cause fading and it can accelerate the fading mechanism. Elevated temperatures can accelerate the fading process. 
Heat can increase the energy of molecular movements, making dyes more susceptible to chemical reactions that degrade their structure. Now, we have been talking about these factors one by one because each one contributes to fading. So, we should know what all we should avoid in order to retain the color. Fading mechanism is also governed by biological factors, insects, microorganisms such as fungus and other biological agents can contribute to the degradation of dyes. For example, bacteria or fungi may produce enzyme that break down the dye molecules. Although it is on one hand when microorganisms degrade the natural dye, we say it is biodegradable and which is an advantage of natural dyes. But when a dyed garment is infected by insects or microorganisms, we need to protect them because we do not want the garment to get destroyed because some of these enzymes can be very crucial to break down the dye molecules. Water quality as already mentioned is very crucial. The quality of water which is being used for washing or the presence of moisture in the environment can affect dye stability. Hard water which contains high levels of mineral may have a negative impact on some of the natural dyes and this is coming time and again. Why are we talking about it again and again? Because it should be well understood that these should be avoided in order to protect the naturally dyed garment from getting faded. Electrochemical reactions can also occur. Dyes can be sensitive to electrochemical reactions, especially when metals are present. Metals can catalyze reactions that lead to the degradation of dye molecules. And we know that there is a huge lot of metal catalyzed photo oxidation, metal catalyzed photo reduction and so on. Now, if some of such metals are present in the uh, vicinity, they are bound to go going to affect the dyed garment and the dye that is uh, uh, present on the dyed garment. So, what I am trying to draw your attention that these should be avoided. How to prevent fading? Understanding these mechanisms allow for better preservation strategies. For instance, storing items away from direct sunlight, using gentle washing practices and controlling environmental conditions can help mitigate the fading of dyes. There are ways to protect. We should know the ways, what are the parameters that we should be careful about to protect. Additionally, the use of protected coating or treatment during manufacturing can enhance the resistance of the dyes to environmental factors. Now, there are auxiliaries available which are used as finishing agent so that some of these factors could be prevented because of that protective coating. Photo fading mechanism. The fading of colored textile upon exposure to light is a well known phenomena and has been an active area of research for nearly 200 years. The mechanism by which dyes undergo photo degradation is thought to be complex. However, most of the research papers suggest that UV light induced unimolecular decomposition and visible light induced photo oxidation are the two main pathways. That means, there are two major reactions. To remember that what is the photo fading mechanism? You have to remember that UV light induced unimolecular decomposition and visible light induced photo oxidation, these are the major two pathways. Dye plus UV light will give 
bleach dry and there are three types of reaction in their simplest form which can be formulated. So, when you have q going to q star, it is actually giving q star is nothing but decomposition product. Then the q star is reacting with A and you get a reaction product and then the A is going to A star and q is reacting with A star and all these give reaction product that is the degraded faded product. So, Q is the dye and A is the colorless substance also present in the system and star is the excited state. So, role of reactive oxygen species ROS, reactive oxygen species were produced by irradiation of dyed fabric and these were capable of destroying dyes because you know they are very very energized oxygen species. The nature of ROS singlet oxygen, hydrogen peroxide, superoxide radicals, hydroxyl radicals or peroxy radical was not defined. Subsequently, a large amount of work has been done on how these species might be formed during irradiation and the damaging effect they have on the dyes. Most attention has been paid to singlet oxygen that is 1 O 2, which can be formed by the quenching of excited states of dyes by the triplet ground state of oxygen. Many model studies have shown that singlet oxygen is very reactive towards dyes, although its importance is still not very clear. So, what I am trying to draw your attention that singlet oxygen is the one which is the culprit. Actual reason of fading, it is all about the chemical makeup of an object. The technical term of color fading is photodegradation. There are light absorbing color bodies called chromophores that are present in the dyes. The color we see are based upon these chemical bonds and the amount of light that is absorbed in a particular wavelength is also based on the presence of the chromophore. Ultraviolet lights are the one of the causes of fading because they can break down chemical bonds and fade the color in an object. The other major contributor to fading include visible light and solar energy. Some objects may be more prone to this bleaching effect such as dye, textile and watercolors. Other objects may reflect the light more which makes them less prone to fading. So, now it is totally based on the chemistry of what is being exposed to ultraviolet light and it would depend whether it would completely fade, partially fade or will be less prone to fading. How to prevent fading? Now, that is the most important thing that we should learn. Making sure that you use correct water temperature for the garment as indicated in the care label. Making sure you see the right kind of detergent when a certain kind of specified specification is given on the care label. Not laundering garments in the washing machine that say hand wash only. Bringing garments to dry cleaners in for dry cleaning when the care label necessitates it. Curing certain textile that are heavily inclined to fading during washing. So, you have to see the label what it is in mentioning and accordingly act upon where what kind of water should be used, what kind of detergent should be used, whether it should be put in the washing machine or whether it should be hand washed, all those things have to be taken into cure. Curing a garment means to set the color so that it would not run in the wash. When you cure the garment, the color will last for a lot longer and it would not dye other items in the same laundry load. To cure a garment, soak it overnight in white vinegar. So, white vinegar becomes a curing agent. 
then launder as usual according to the label care. Many manufacturers cure the colored clothing they make, but less costly garments are sometimes sold uncured. To be safe, it is a wise move to soak all your new garments to make them color fast. Clothing that is already cured by manufacturer will be marked as being color fast and do not require curing. UV radiation is one of the biggest culprit. The sun's energy is made up of three distinct spectral components, ultraviolet radiation, visible radiation and near infrared radiation. What distinguishes these from one another is the wavelength ranges that categorize them commonly measured in nanometer. A nanometer is very small. A human hair is about 100,000 nanometer thick. Ultraviolet radiation is invisible to the human eye and has the shortest wavelength of the three types mentioned from 300 to about 380 nanometer. Visible light covers the approximate range from 380 to 780 nanometer, while the near infrared radiation sometimes also called as invisible solar heat has the longest wavelength from 780 to 4045 nanometer. So, these are the three main culprits which can cause fading to natural dyes. UV radiation therefore, is the single largest contributor of contributing factor in fading of fabric, carpets and other furnishing. Although visible light, electric lighting, heating, humidity, age of fabric and fabric dyes all play a part in the process. UV radiation is contributing 40 percent of the damage. Protecting against UV is not just important in hot sunny climate. Even in cold cloudy climate, UV radiation can damage furnishing. So, we have to be very, very careful. UV can also be hazardous to human According to American Academy of Dermatology, exposure to the sun and its harmful UV radiation is causing an epidemic in skin cancer causes in recent years. So, you see it is health affecting human health. Several products are moderately affected at blocking UV ultraviolet light, low emissivity coating on glass provide additional protection from UV. However, even the best of these coatings still transmit 26 percent of the UV radiation. So, whether it is emissivity coatings or any other thing, it still does not protect from 100 percent. One PVB interlayer supplier states that laminated architectural glass made with clear or tinted interlayer is essentially opaque to UV light radiation, but that is not all that can help. So, the factors affecting fading, there are external factors and internal factors, humidity of the atmosphere, spectral distribution of the radiation to which the samples are exposed, temperature, these are all under external factor. Internal factors are constitution and properties of the dye, constitution and properties of the fabric on which it is applied, the physical state of the dye, other auxiliaries present along with the dyes. There are strong indications that oxidation reduction reactions involved in the photo degradation of dyes on the textiles. The physical state of the dye is generally more important than the chemical structure. The more finely dispersed the dye is within the fiber, the more rapidly it will fade. Fibers with large aggregates of dye are more light fast, since a small surface area of the dye is exposed to air and light. Therefore, 
you know when we say that nano coating is very good although it covers a bigger surface, but then it is more susceptible for photo degradation. And so, to wind up we will say that the fading mechanism of natural dyes, the fading mechanisms can have be affected by light exposure that is the UV light. It can be affected by high temperature, can accelerate the degradation of natural dyes. Heat can increase the rate of chemical reaction within the dye molecules leading to color fading or changes. Therefore, excessive heat is not good. Oxygen can be very harmful for uh, natural dyes, especially singlet oxygen which can cause oxidation and color changes. Washing should not be done under harsh condition that is very harsh alkaline detergents in very hot water should not be used because they will contribute to fading of natural dyes. So, milder detergents water which is of ambient temperature should be used which will protect the degradation of dye molecules from fading. pH of the environment also can affect the stability of natural dyes and so care should be taken that these should not be used neither very highly acidic nor very highly alkaline should be used for you know the washing purpose or dyeing purpose because they are going to have chemical reaction and degrade the dye molecule and lead to feeding. So, fading can be avoided by taking into consideration all these factors the sunlight, the heat, the oxygen, the quality of washing water, the quality of washing detergent, the pH and with this we have come to an end of this lecture. Even environmental pollution can need to be minimized so that there is no ozone and sulfur dioxide which can accelerate the fading of natural dyes. So, overall to conclude the fading mechanism of natural dyes involves a combination of factors including light, heat, oxygen, washing condition, pH and environmental pollutants. Minimizing exposure to these factors and employing proper storage and care techniques can help preserve the color fastness of natural dyes and prevent from fading. Additionally, some natural dyes may be more susceptible or could be stable or resistant to fading other than others. So, one has to keep in mind the chemical composition and the properties of that particular natural dye and take the fading precautions accordingly. So, if we have to wind up, we have to remember what all can affect fading of natural dyes. Oxygen can react with certain components of natural dyes causing oxidation and color changes. Exposure to air over time can lead to the gradual fading of natural dyes as oxidation occurs. Washing, harsh washing conditions such as using alkaline detergents or hot water can contribute to the fading of natural dyes. Chemical reactions with the detergent or water can degrade the dye molecules leading to color loss. pH as I had been repeatedly telling that the pH of the environment can affect the stability of natural dyes. Extreme pH levels either highly acidic or highly alkaline can cause chemical reactions that degrade the dye molecules and lead to feed fading. Now, it is important to understand that whether it is oxygen, whether it is washing water, whether it is pH, whether it is UV light, whether it is heat, everything has its own role to play and they play an independent role by fading the dye as this natural dye molecules are very susceptible for fading. So much so that, that even environmental pollution can affect exposure to environmental pollutants such as ozone or sulfur dioxide can accelerate the fading of natural dyes. These pollutants can react with the dye molecules 
and accelerate the fading process leading to chemical changes and color loss. Overall, the fading mechanism of natural dyes involve a combination of factors which I have again and again mentioned in this lecture including light, heat, oxygen, washing condition, pH and environmental pollution. Minimizing exposure to these factors and employing proper storage and care techniques can help preserve the color fastness of natural dyes. Additionally, some natural dyes may be more stable or resistant to fading than the others. So, it is not a universal rule that all the natural dyes will fade uh, uh, in the similar manner. Some of the dyes have good light fastness. Now, if I say what is meant by good light fastness, that means that it can withhold the UV light radiation without getting degraded. And this is what the current research is going on that how do we further improve the color fastness or light fastness of these natural dyes by using some of these techniques or some chemical overcoating so that curing of course is one of them, but can we do some other kind of protective covering so that UV light does not affect the natural dye which is on the surface of the garment. So, it is totally dependent on the nature of the chemical molecular structure of the natural dye and accordingly we need to plan how should we strategize, what are the ways in which we can protect the fading. And there is a basic rule that natural dyes need to be protected. UV light from extra heat, from that means it should be not hard water, but soft water seeing that there is no pH variation in that done and laundering only if the otherwise hand washing is recommended. So, if we, we can definitely avoid fading to a much as it would do otherwise. So, with this lecture, thank you.